Okay, hi, how's everyone? Um, my name is Ben Bardsley, the CEO of BX, and I just wanted to have a really high energy 10 minutes to run you through this big problem, but also a potential solution that we've, in, we've, we, we've built. And it's all about, can big data enable us to eat our way out of, chi out of climate change? So the first thing is I would like to kind of tell you my story. Um, my story starts in the British Army. I was a lieutenant in the Welsh Guards, and I deployed to Afghanistan in 2012. Uh, whilst on patrol, I was uh, ambushed by the Taliban and shot through the chest. The bullet went through my right armpit and came on my lower back. And why that's relevant for today's uh, talk is that, I don't know if anyone's been near to close death experience, but you do have a bit of a moment, and you go, I said to myself, if I survive this, I genuinely want to make a difference. At that point, I had no idea how, what, or when, but now that I'm the COBX, it's becoming quite clear that we have an opportunity of making a real difference to global climate change. Luckily, as you can see, I made a full recovery. I went from being on death's door to bouncing out of uh, intensive care three weeks later. And a year later, I then left the British Army and joined my family fruit farming business in Kent. When I arrived, we were a very small entity. Uh, we were turning over about 900,000 a year. My father made a tidy 10% profit, but really needed some energy behind it to kind of scale to compete with modern agriculture. So after a few over-the-kitchen conversations about the future uh, and with the support of my family, as the MD, I started to scale our business. We went from one of the smallest to one of the largest top food producers in the UK. When I sold the business last year, we were the second largest. And in that incredible journey of 1,600% growth over eight years, I saw agriculture for what it's worth. I saw warts and all. I saw success and I saw failure and I saw more failure. As I was going through that scaling journey of acquiring more businesses, putting technology into my business to give me some more visibility, getting close to my customer, the retailers, so creating direct networks with them to take costs out of supply chain. All that I could really see was there's two major problems. The first one, as I scaled my business, I was encountering more risk and smaller margin. And for the business people in this room, which I'm sure there's many, that's not a great equation for a long-term business model. The second one, and more importantly, was the larger I became, the more negative environmental impact I was having on the environment. The more I was spraying, the more uh, negative actions that my farm was having to do to compete in a world that is completely monetized to produce more for less to provide cheap food. So as a family in 2021, we took the very bold decision to exit. We had an offer that, I'll be honest with you, we couldn't refuse. But before that point, I thought, how could technology solve my solution. So in 20, January 2020, I set up BX as a subsidiary of my former business. And I employed a very highly skilled group of 21 people and spent a million pounds to understand the problem. And that's probably the best million pounds I'm ever going to spend in my journey because we now understand this problem. When I sold the business last year, we then flipped BX out into its own entity. We raised 1.4 million to get us going on our journey to restore this planet for future generations. Okay, hopefully that gives you some gravitas. I was very much a frustrated farmer that wanted to make a difference. And standing here before you today, we have a chance of making a big difference. I don't need to tell you this. I think the reason why we're all here is because we know this is the case. The current food system is totally broken and, and will not be here in between 50 and 70 years' time. I have three children, three girls, seven, five, and two. I look at them and if I do not make a difference with a collective of other fantastic people around me, I don't think they will have children in the same way that we had children. This is very serious and we have to change it. However, we passionately believe at BX that big data is very much the answer to solving this food crisis. How do I think that? The first thing we need to do as farmers, and I've been listening to lots of talks today, Everybody's talking about data, collecting data, different ag techs, different people, different ways of how a farmer can understand more and more and more. But I'm not sure they can understand. They can collect. And there's many companies that will sell you collection devices. But what we've got to do is we've got to bring all those collection devices together and harmonize them under one platform. So within BX, we work with lots of different people. We API with different ag techs. We're monetizing ag techs because currently they are struggling to make long-term business models because farmers can't afford to deploy the technology on farm. We're APIing with 
different agencies, different people. So on farm, farmers are already collecting a huge amount of data. And what we do as BX is just make sure that it's a super simple, light touch way of centralizing that data source. We then chuck in a lot more data. So open source data. You know a lot about that, probably a lot more than I do. I've got some great people who are sitting down in the front here who know a lot about it. But open source data is a beast, and it's growing all the time. Climatic data, geology data, um, soil data. It gets growing and growing and growing. And so there's a lot we can do remotely from farm to understand what's happening on farm. And then the farmer themselves, they are a data collection machine. They are constantly understanding on farm what they're doing. They're taking pictures. They're making notes. They're talking to agronomists. They know better than else what's happening on their patch of ground, but they're potentially not recording that data to enable the next stage to happen. The next stage, interpretation. And this is where you take the trillions and trillions and trillions of data points that one single farm has and start to turn it into a platform that can generally make a difference. Currently, there's a real lack of interpretation in farming, and this is one of the biggest reasons that I sat there as, one, as the second largest top fruit grower in the UK, I created a tech business to interpret this data and miserably failed at that point. There was no impact I could have on farm, but now I stepped away from the farming business. I'm looking at farming, which is one of the most wonderful industries in the world and has great opportunity. We can now start to make a difference. And I'll come on to how we're interpreting in a second. And then finally... Well, that all sounds great, Ben, and you're just another tech entrepreneur that's boring me. It's late. It's, it's 6 o'clock, and I want to go have a beer. But we've got to communicate. If we don't get that environmental data across to our end customer, they're never going to buy into what we're trying to achieve. Now, our end customer right now has a problem. The food crisis is very, very, very serious. We all know that. People are, are struggling to put the kettle on, put the oven on, to even afford to cook the food that we provide for them. But that's not going to be the case forever. So the way we look at it is we've got to go to a different party. The retailers and F&B brands, they are our customers. They have so much power. And it's interesting with Ubi before me, he's trying to disrupt them. But currently, the retailers and F&B brands have so much power to make change. They have an opportunity to make impact. They have an opportunity to be a massive part of the global, uh, the global climate change crisis. OK, frame the, frame the problem pretty well, I think. On to the next. How are BX unlocking the opportunity? Sorry, this is my clicker. Really well rehearsed, clearly. OK. The first product that we developed is something called the BX score. The BX score is like a credit rating for farmers, but only looks environmentals. In the same way that a credit agreement, your personal credit agreement is made up of many um, personal credit, sorry, many personal credit agreements make up your score, we go to field level, so many fields make up your score. And what we're looking on farm is three things. Firstly is how much of your farm is on our platform, a simple percentage. And I should say this is by product. So if you're a farm that produces apples, cherries, and pears, for instance, we will have three, X, three BX scores per product. So how much of your land have you put on our product? A simple percentage, pretty easy for you to go from day one to from day zero to day one and go 100% on that score. Now the really key bit. What are you doing on farm? What regenerative, re regenerative or we call panic positive actions are you doing on farm that can generally make impact and trans uh, transform your farm from being a, a harmful commercial farm into a planet positive, profitable regenerative farm? And these are many, many ways. There's some real experts probably sitting in the room. You know, this starts with cover cropping, reducing herbicides, pesticides, rotational grazing with, with, with animals. Uh, you know, it goes on and on and on. And there are a thousand things you can do on farm, but we capture that through an MRV process. And then finally is, what is the impact? So we put all my farm onto the platform. Good. I've now deployed cover crops, I've done this, I've done that, I've reduced my herbicide by 50%, I'm seeing real differences in my farm, the biodiversity levels are now flooding in, my, I'm using less water on my farm. Those are the things we're recording. Soil carbon, biodiversity levels, and water. And believe it or not, it's pretty easy for us to monitor that. There are some fantastic ag tech companies that we're working very closely with to provide us with your impact data. I should say the key thing in day one is impact doesn't happen day one. It takes time for impact. But the top two is how we heavily weight our score. 
So if you're going to put all your farm onto our platform and you're going to double down on regenerative practices, you will get a very high score. Okay, I think you've got it. What do we do with this score? So I've already said our, our, our customers are retailers and F&B brands. We've just signed a trial agreement with the UK's largest retailer. They are going to start paying you based on your BS score. So you're going to do a normal negotiation about the price. That happens normally. We do not get involved in that. What we get involved in is providing a score for you. They will then pay you a percentage of that money based on your BS score. And in top fruit alone, so Apple production, you could, potentially go, you could potentially increase your bottom line by 50%. Now, last year, when I was heading up Bards England, and I was, I was told by some ag tech entrepreneur that I could double my bottom line, I would have sat up and noticed, because this is really interesting. And what's more interesting is when I knew that the supermarket would pay me, not the end consumer, that makes me more interesting. So why are they doing that? F&B brands and retailers globally have a big, big issue. Their scope three, their scope three emissions are out of control, and they, don't, they need to change it. Taxation's coming. The pressure from their consumers is building. The ability for them to work with governments to make sure that they are in the right place, not the wrong place, is leading them to think differently about how they price food. So we are at the very early stages of creating a model which has generally changed food production and make regenerative growers globally Wealthy, profitable, and planet-positive growers. Okay. Sam, the second product we have. So I'm a grower. I've just deployed the BX platform. It's all very well, Ben. You're telling me that you can interpret all this data, and that's all fine. But how are you going to tell me what to do on farm in a light-touch way? Because we're not putting boots on, ground, o on the farm. We're using our platform to support that transition. This is how we're doing it. So our virtual agronomist, Sam. So I've really spoken about the data sources in length. There are many amazing companies that we're integrating with to bring this solution to market. And then we've got ag tech, sorry, uh, regenerative experts by product that sits on our advisory board. And they are the people that know most globally about how regen can be deployed in the most successful manner. And they are helping us train the BX platform. That then leads into Sam. And Sam is using deep machine learning and AI. And I'll be honest with you, there is no AI in BX yet. Give me 12 months, 18 months, looking at some of my guys in front here, and we'll be using AI to throw out interesting, and, uh, you know, interesting insights that enable farmers to transition quicker. And all the while, they're increasing their BX score. And then finally, the grower. You know, this whole story starts and stops with growers. I was one. I saw the pain. Without growers, the world is totally and utterly ended. People won't eat. We know that. So the grower is a really important part of this brick saw, the most important part of the jigsaw. And then from there, we do an extensive MRV process. For those who don't know what MRV is, MRV is how you measure, report, and validate what the farmer has been saying they're doing on farm. And there's, again, many ways we do that, mostly through third-party ag tech solutions. And what that does is then throws out the BX score. So hopefully you can see very clearly there's a virtual cycle. And once one retailer that we're working closely with now does it, every other retailer in the UK goes for it, and then from there, retailers globally. Now, we're early stages. Yeah, we only launched a year ago, but we're getting great gravitas in the market. And I hope those people in the room who are farmers can see how this could work and help you increase your bottom line whilst you transition across. That's all I've got, because I want to throw uh, to the room for questions for five minutes. But you know, we're on an incredi incredible journey. You can see from my guys, we're all very passionate about what we're doing, and I genuinely believe that we could make 1% difference. We could be 1% solution to the current, current global climate crisis. Thank you. Okay, questions. There he is. Lady at the back, maybe start there, or go here, or? What does Sam stand for? Soil Agronomist Machine, or anything you want, really. We used it because it's gender neutral and transferable across languages, so yeah, that's why we do Hello. Hi, uh, Louise from the Soil Association. Hi, Louise. Um, I may have missed it, but can you talk a bit more about, are you uh, measuring all the different environmental outcomes on farm, and, and are you doing a holistic approach, so water quality, biodiversity, soils, and also um, one that often I don't hear about, what I'm starting to get interested in, is um, one of the 
something fundamental is diversification. We need a more diverse farming system at farm level, landscape level, and that needs to reflect in diets. So I'm curious to know whether that's something you've looked at in terms of metrics around diversity. Yeah, great question. Um, so to answer your first question, yes, we're using those different metrics. So carbon in the soil, biodiversity levels, and water, the th first things we're going after. Um, and to answer your second, second question, that will come in time. So we're very aware that there is a very complex ecosystem on the farm. They might have a wood. They might have big set-aside um, areas for biodiversity, and then they've got their crop. So in time, our model will encompass all of that to throughout the best way of monetizing that patch of land or that farm holistically. And that's what we're excited by what Sam can start to do for us. So if you think Sam is the most intelligent agronomist globally once we get there, they're using trillions of data points from many countries across the world to give you your answer on farm. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so of course that, that will be part of the, re the regenerative movement. You know, do, do you have a single crop? Do you go to multiple crops? Do you bring ab animals to come and graze through the crops? Those animals that are coming in, how are they being sold as well? So we go after three product markets, fruits and nuts, veg, dairy, and meat. That's our three, uh, four product markets we're going after in the initial phase. Whatever, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Andy Ware, sheep farmer down in Somerset. Um, do you think BX will be able to help support and increase the wool market? We're finding a lot of people in the textile industry are totally disillusioned with synthetics and obviously a great tradition in wool. And moving forward, could that kind of help us move f wool back into the f uh, kind of fiber market again? I, I, I 100%, there's absolutely no reason why. Um, the reason why I say we're not going off to that in the initial phase is because you know, we've got to be real as to where we're going. But what we're creating could be done far beyond wool. It could be done for timber, for furniture making. It could be done for anything that comes out of the ground. There is no reason why a model can't be used for that. Um, but we've got to specialize in what we do, right? Those four products across um, UK, Europe, North America, South America, South Africa, um, sorry, Africa and Australasia is 1% impact if we can get that right. So we've got a big task ahead of us. Final question, Farani. Hi, my name is Manuela. Um, can you tell us a bit more about your MRV process, especially as you said you weren't putting beets in the ground. I was wondering how that works, especially for soil. Yeah, so, so, so the MRV from a soil perspective is soil samples, so w yearly soil samples engaging with companies such as Eurofins, AgriCarbon, and any other one person that wants to work with us. So the rest of the MRV process is, again, integrating with ag tech companies. So we will fund that data collection on farm or that validation on farm. Um, I'll be honest with you, Super, super, super clear. At this stage, we're quite heavy touch, so we will be deploying BXs on farm to do manual val validations in the early days. But as we develop our tech product and our tech product becomes more and more light touch, they, they will disappear. Um, and then our customer success team will make sure the grower is happy with what we're doing. Thank you very much.